guys. Okay. So yeah, my name is Moore. Um, I've been here for a while, probably since I'd say around like February. Um, I have a YouTube channel that you could check out. Talk about things about self improvement and so on. But this lecture, here's how I'm, I'm going to structure it. First, we're going to talk about. We're going to give you more awareness of the issue here. What is the issue at hand? And then we're going to give you more practical tips, how to limit your phone usage. And at the end of this lecture, I really want you guys to... Obviously, I'm going to get people up to the stage. And what we're going to do is hear from you guys if you have any experiences, anything of that sort. I want to hear how did you guys, or how were you able to limit phone usage um, and so on. And the biggest thing here, we're going to start with, you know, awareness of the problem, right? Awareness in it of itself is transformative. So let me first start with my story. I know what it's like to, you know, binge on YouTube till four in the morning. I know we've all been there just being social media addicts, YouTube, whatever, everything. Just looking at your phone time, screen time. And all you see is like five, six, seven, ten hours. We've been there before. And yes, many of you may be experiencing this. And this is what I want to talk about today. And we all know how we feel drained, honestly. Like how many of you feel drained after you use your phone and social media? Like, do you, I'm sure you know this feeling, right? You just, you're on social media, you're scrolling. Even 10, 15 minutes pass by. And all we feel is just like this feeling of your energy being drained away from you. Yeah. You know, how many of us want this in our life? This is not the way to live. And yes, everything, everything has to be balanced in life. But digital minimalism, what it is about really, it's, as I said before, we want to pretty much focus our online time on being more intentional. Um, we're going to reduce clutter in our online world. And the biggest thing is we're going to avoid the any benefit approach. Now, many of you may have heard about this approach. It's actually discussed in deep work. What the any benefit approach is, is we look at social media use, for example, right? So a person could be like, there's one positive thing about it. For example, I can catch up with friends and I don't care about any other negatives. Like there's a million negatives, but I'm just going to look at one positive. And basically that's why I'm, I'm going to stick to Instagram. That's why I'm going to like scroll on it the whole day. And that's why I'm going to be addicted to social media, et cetera, all these apps. And this benefit of any benefit approach is flawed. The, on the other side, we have the craftsman craftsman approach. This is also discussed in deep work. And this approach is, especially, I'm I want to talk about social media, for example. You're going to look at all the positives and all the negatives. And to be able to choose that I want to stick to Instagram, Facebook, and Discord, the positives must significantly outweigh the negatives, like by a lot, by like, like I don't know how many percentage points you want to put it on, but significantly the positives must outweigh the negatives right so you really have to before we get started you really have to think or journal but really think about what apps do i use day to day list out all the positives and then all the negatives because obviously there's a lot of negatives and see do these positives significantly outweigh the negatives in that case, yeah, do keep it. In that case, you know, we can look at, for example, Discord, right? We can look at this group. You really have to look at, is this helping you? Is this group helping you? Or are you wasting time that you could be meditating? You could be working out. So stuff like that. But as I said, the first part of the lecture is going to be more of the awareness side. So I really want to talk firstly about all these apps, social media apps specifically that really don't have 
your best intention in mind. So let's talk about specifics. In Digital Minimalism, it's actually a book. We talk about the concept of digital minimalism, but Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport is the book. And in that book, there was actually an ex-Facebook worker or software developer or whatever. He said in the book, I'm quoting here, he said the thought process behind Facebook was how do we consume as much of your time and conscious attention as possible? And that means that we need to sort of give you a little dopamine hit every once in a while because someone liked or commented on a photo. Now, as I said, how do you hear me now? Changer, it's fine. Okay. Maybe because I'm talking loud sometimes and whispering. But let me know if everything's fine. Let's continue. So, yeah, these apps really don't have your true intentions in mind. Facebook doesn't care about you. Instagram doesn't care about you. It's the same company, by the way. But all they care about is your time. There's a thing called, I think, I think called like the time economy. Um, and basically, your time is their assets. We go on Instagram, we go on Facebook, it's free. We don't have to pay. But we're trading our time and our time is the most valuable asset that we have. We're not gonna get it back. And it pretty much is the most valuable asset. And you're selling your time. Yes, these, yes, Discord is free. Yes, all these social media apps, TikToks, whatever. It's all free, right? But what's under, what's behind this, right? Your time. And yes, we, you know that you could say this is obvious, but I just want you to get that awareness, right? You're literally trading your time for Facebook's money, for TikTok's money. Your time is the most, as I said, most valuable asset. You could be starting a business. You could be meditating. Imagine how many things you can be doing with that time. And these companies really exploit you. And it, we don't really see it. But they actually have engineers that they work in the back and it's really, they have like teams. This is a known thing. Facebook, especially they have teams that work on coming up with ways to make it more addicting, to make the platform more addicting. Then they can make more, more money out of advertisements, etc. But they actually did this study and they saw that, that Rewards delivered unpredictably, they're far more enticing than those delivered with a known pattern. And what, is, what does this mean in the world of social media? In our brain, right? There's something about unpredictability. We don't really know exactly, but the brain loves the unknown. It releases mo more dopamine. And dopamine is a key neurotransmitter. Transmitter. Uh, for regulating our sense of craving. And so these tech companies, they exploit this. They know that this is a fact, right? As I said, rewards delivered unpredictably. They're more enticing. So imagine actually, when you scroll up on Instagram, your feed changes every time, right? This is actually this concept that hand playing. You don't know what you're going to actually see right instagram if you remember like a couple of years ago before this algorithm everything was chron chronological today it's actually it always changes try like updating your feed every time your stories are gonna align differently it's gonna show you different things it's gonna always update you go on on tiktok same thing right everything is gonna update and, and especially the scrolling thing right we always scroll down or let's say let's give the example of TikTok, which I hate, but that's another story. You scroll down and you don't know what you're gonna uh, you don't know what you're gonna see. Like the next thing could be dog, could be anything. Honestly, I don't know what's on TikTok. But uh, <laughs> yeah, these rewards are unpredictable and your brain really loves that. And 
I can give you a bunch of examples, but just think of like any app that you use. Notifications are also an example, right? They come at unpredictable times. You get an alert, you get a text, immediately your brain fires dopamine. And this is what's so addicting about it. When we look at Discord, for example, I'm going to talk about Discord. I'm going to talk about YouTube. I'm going to talk about Facebook here. Do you ever see when someone sends you a message? Do you ever think about the notification? Is like the color is red, right? Now imagine it was green or imagine it was blue. Would, would that entice you to click on it? Like, real, real question, right? Personally, I don't think so. You can argue otherwise, but red is known, and he did studies on this. Red is known as an alarm color, right? We associate red with blood. This is like almost a survival mechanism, right? If in the past we saw like someone is bleeding, blood is red, right? Immediately your eyes open. Immediately you need to be more aware. You need to, your attention should be focused, right? On that color. So all these tech companies, they explore you, even Discord, right? Believe it or not, we don't talk about it, but actually Facebook, they, they actually tried this thing where in the past, the notification drop down was actually blue and they thought people were just, people were just not clicking on it. It wasn't working. And so, yeah, they changed it to red and immediately. And unsurprisingly, right, people were clicking. Imagine YouTube. If you have the YouTube app, you see the subscription, and you see that it's always like red, right? You see that little red circle? It's very enticing to click on it. I believe it. I believe like me, myself, whenever I see that color, I just want to click, click. And, and these companies know this. And that's kind of the awareness I want to give you here in the first section. They know that they could exploit you. They exploit you with colors. They exploit you with your psychology. They literally hire people to find new ways to exploit you. And yeah, we're in attention economy. Your attention is their currency. And the more attention, the more time you spend on these platforms, the more money they make. And yeah, it's just, you really have to open your eyes here. Another way they exploit you is our drive for social approval. You know, in the past, if we weren't approved by a tribe, we were useless. So same thing, right? Instagram, people like your post, people comment. This gives you social approval. If someone tags you, for example, that gives you the sense that someone thought of you, someone approved you. You were approved by your tribe, right? Same thing. And these companies know this. They know that they're going to exploit your drive for social approval. They're going to make you think that you're missing out. They're going to make you think that you're missing out on things that, and you know, in the past, it seems like you would be deemed useless, so you would die if you were missing out. But just know you're trading your time for someone else's money. And I really want you guys to open your eyes to this. These companies, society, they want you to be weak. They don't want you to be a digital minimalist like I, I'm going to get to. It's honestly Facebook's worst nightmare. Imagine Facebook knew they were spending 12 minutes on Instagram per day. Someone like that. They don't care about you. They hate you. And that's honestly Facebook's worst nightmare. If someone like you is going to join this like attention resistance, it's called, and decide that they're not going to consume like, like everyone else. There's almost this agenda. You could say it's society's agenda or whatever. But the more we numb people, the more we connect them to the phone, the more we let them forget about present reality, 
your situation, how financially free are you? How is your business doing? The more we could distract you, the more we can make money, the more we benefit. And this is seen in many things, right? Not just social media, media advertisements, television, everything. So now that you have that awareness, right? We could talk about this for a while, but just know that these companies, they don't have your best intention in time in mind. They don't care about you and your attention, your attention is their currency. So part two of this lecture, what are we on 15 minutes? Part two of this lecture is we're going to talk about practical tips. Just know these tips, they're not quick, quick fixes or anything, but they will help you and really take them seriously. Really take what I'm about to say seriously. And this is just know from my personal experience. Yes, you can be different. Some of these things might not work for you. Teach your own, but just open your eyes to what I'm about to say. Many of this, these things you might've heard about. But open your eyes and I hope really with the first section, you're able to get that awareness. So we're gonna start with the rule of thumb. Keep this in your head, right? The more time I'm away from my phone, the better my life will be. Just drill that down to the more time I'm away from my phone, the better my life will be. If you're arguing with this, are you going to say, oh, I needed my phone for this, for that? You don't really need it as much as you think. Just keep this in the back of your head as I'm about to say some of the tips that could help you. How many of you have this feeling or the need to know everything? I know like when I, or in the past, not anymore, the second I woke up, I had this urge or feeling like I was missing out, right? Yeah, I see a lot of people saying me, you feel this feeling like you're missing out, like there's a lot of things going on, on in the online world that you're missing out of. And we really have to drill this down that you simply don't need to know everything. You really have to fight this urge this feeling that you always need to know. It's almost like a craving, right? You feel like craving to always know how many people texted you, how many people sent you a DM on Instagram, etc. Think about your life here. Really think, do I have this feeling, this urge to always know what I missed? And how do we tackle this, right? Because this is a big idea. This goes to talk, we're going to talk about craving here, right? And craving what it is, we all know what it is. But how do we handle craving? You feel this sense of an urge, check your phone. Trust me, I, I get this sense even today. Even if I'm here talking to you guys, giving you this lecture about digital minimalism. Don't think I'm some like Buddhist monk. Anyone and everyone is influenced by their phone in today's world, but we just have to be aware. I said in the beginning of the lecture, awareness in and of itself is transformative. And you really have to, that's why I'm giving you all these information, right? So yes, you get this craving to flip your phone. Your phone's on your desk, you get the craving to check, or you get a alert, you feel that little ding in your, that's it. What helps, what helps us reduce this power and craving? It's not gonna sound appealing. Again, you heard this a million times, but it's meditation. Meditation reduces this power, this power of the lizard brain. You heard this a million times, but meditation helps you more rational thoughts. You're more aware of everything that you do and 
you're just more intentional, right? You really step out of that mindset of, oh, I have to quickly check my phone. But instead, you're in, in that that mindset of, wait, do I really need to see what's going on? And it's really an amazing place to be. And meditating five minutes per day is not where you will get to that level. You really have to step up your game. Try and meditate 20 minutes minimum, I'd say. Because five, 10 minutes a day is not going to get you to that level. But yes, if you're starting out, I don't want to discourage you. Start out slow. Start with five, 10 minutes. Go up, right? You can't. Let's think about this. You can't exercise for five, 10 minutes a day and say that you're going to get jacked in six months. It's going to take more investment. So same with meditation. My mic is not good. All right, let's fix, let's fix the mic. How's it now? Tell me how, how it is. Okay. Okay. Good. Awesome. So where was I? I talked about meditation, reducing the power of the lizard brain. It helps you be more clear headed and just more aware of that voice in your head telling you, you have to check that alert. You have to check social media. You have to scroll. You have to do this. And yes, many of you are already meditating. I'm sure you're here. So how can you use meditation? I want you to, whenever you get an alert on your phone or the urge to check, I want you to immediately note that urge. Many of you heard this in meditation. Noting is a very important technique. You're just noting and being more aware that you have this almost urge. I said it like many times, I'm going to repeat this, how awareness is important and how just awareness by itself is transformative. I'm going to repeat that a million times today. But once you're aware, you can step out of that and not let your lizard brain almost step in. And instead, let that prefrontal cortex step in, which is the more rational side of your brain, which could think more rationally and be like, no, I need to work out. Why I need to meditate. Why am I about to scroll on Instagram, et cetera? Okay. So meditation is number one. We're going to talk about eight tips. So the next thing we're going to talk about is in the morning, how many of you first thing you do in the morning is immediately open your phone. This ties to what I said before of the feeling to know everything, the feeling that you missed out. Yep. And yeah, we're going to talk, I'm going to bring people up later to the lecture stage and I want you guys to talk about all this, talk about how you're able to incorporate these tips or anything else that I missed out. I'm sure I miss, I'm missing out on a couple of things. And yes, I'll answer your questions soon. I see, I see a lot of questions, but if anyone wants to answer people in the chat that have questions, feel free, that would help a lot, but let's continue. I asked how many people in the morning immediately have this feeling that they need to see everything, everything they missed out and they immediately grab their phone first thing in the morning. Now this is one way you can limit your phone use and actually the most important. The second you open your phone in the morning, you're opening almost a door to negativity or not only that stress and anxiety, you're opening a door to unpredictability, things that are out of your control. What are things that are under your control? Things that are under your control are, you know, wake up, go meditate, go work out, go do this. The second you open your phone, you can't control what you're about to see. You open your phone, you get a text from your friend telling you this annoying thing and this news headline is going to bother you for the rest of your day. 
lots of negativity. You open your phone, you immediately go on Instagram. You see how this guy is more Jack than you. You start comparing people. You start, you start your moaning on the wrong foot. And that's really what I want to drill down here. Starting your phone in your day, first thing in the morning, starting with your phone is a way to really have an unproductive, unproductive day. And so I want you to start experimenting this with this. Try and limit your phone usage in the morning. In the morning, I want you at least, you're starting out at least 30 minutes, right? You want to start small. Then bump that up one hour, one and a half hours. I really want you guys to not be dependent on your phone. And so we start somewhere. And this is where I want you to start, right? First thing in the morning, you need something to do. You need to schedule something and schedule a workout and schedule the schedule meditation. And the second you grab your phone again, news headlines, negativity, you open your bank account, you see all, you see your, how you're poor, you see, see all the negativity. I can't think of, um, I can think of a million things right now. But you could probably think in your life how many times you open your phone and you get a text from your friend, you get a text from your mom, you get a text from this, from that, and immediately you started your day on the wrong foot. Yeah, someone said make your bed, make your bed first. Honestly, yeah, first thing, make your bed. You get out of your bed, don't open your phone, make your bed, and go and do some something productive. Go meditate, go work out. I want you guys to do that. So limit phone usage in the morning because that opens doors to unpredictability, negativity, and things that are out of your control. You want the day, as I said, what is digital minimalism? You want the day to be more intentional. You want the day to be more under your control and not under other people's controls. You're not letting social media companies influence you. You're letting your own mind and your own thoughts influence you. So that's the second thing. A third thing that I really love, Hamza talked about this in one of his videos, is put your phone screen time on the home screen. And let's take that a step further. I want you to add to your habit tracker the amount of time that this could be different for anyone, right? Everyone, but the amount of time that you want to spend on your phone per day. And so I have it in front of me right now. I call it screen time. And here I write on my habit tracker screen time, less than one and a half hours. Now that's a lot. It could be a lot to some, but I use my phone for working out for the strong app and such. And even after workout, it could be like 30, 40 minutes. So, so think about how much one and a half or even less, like sometimes it's one 15 minutes, how much screen time that is. It's really nothing. So, but set a goal that's reasonable for you. If you're doing like five today, maybe four hours, if you're doing three, maybe two, maybe one. Thank you, Aban. I'll, I'll answer your question soon. I just really want to drill this down so I don't get distracted. But <clears throat> add it to your habit tracker. It's one more thing that is so important. It's really a habit, right? Phone usage. Make it something that's doable. If you're doing 10 hours, 15 hours, one hour is not going to work and you're just going to kill yourself by being mad that you weren't able to do one hour of screen time. Now the fourth practical tip here is what are we going to do with this extra time, right? We're decreasing, we're decreasing our social media use. We're decreasing our phone usage. And now we have more time. 
what do we do with this time? As I said, digital minimalists, they're very intentional with their time. And yeah, you could be saying that now I'm going to limit my phone use, but you're not going to do anything with that extra time. So limiting phone usage gives you extra time in your day. And naturally, you'd want to develop more habits and more skills. And, and that's where it comes. I want you to develop habits or hobbies that you've always put off. Or even going to the gym for longer, getting more rest times in between your workout would really help you grow. And instead of rushing your workout, now you have more time in your day. But this is a step. I really, I'm really pausing here in each step because I really want you guys to think in your life. I don't want to just give you random tips and then there's, you're going to forget about this. Instead, I want you to really take it in and think, what can I develop or what have I been putting off my life? What hobbies and things that I want to do? So be more intentional with your time. And with that comes making a timetable. And yes, you heard this a million times, but let this time be the time that it sticks. This is actually your to do your homework for today. If you don't have a timetable, make your ideal timetable. I want you guys to, yeah, some people are writing theirs, but really think, how am I going to structure my ideal day? And yeah, many, you heard this a million times. Many people are going to be like, oh, but what if this happens? What if that happens? No, we don't care about that. We care about being even 60% on par with your timetable. And so this is really big. Once you have a timetable and once you try your best to pretty much every day of your life abide by this timetable, then are you even going to take time to waste time on Instagram? You know you need to meditate like after your workout. Are you really going to spend time wasting on social media, on TikTok, etc.? I really feel like being more intentional with your time starts with a timetable. Yeah, very nice. Very important. I was talking about Bond, very nice timetable. We want something like this, right? Very detailed. So Bon here really knows how to be intentional with his time. And that's really amazing. I want you guys to look at that and really make your own. It could be in blocks. So for example, you, instead of writing like a million things, teach your own, right? But instead of writing a million things, you can be like one and a half hours for meditating, journaling, and doing this, like a bond did in eight to nine, for example. So do that, make your timetable. I want you to be much more intentional with your time. And this is what digital minimalism is about. The more intentional we are with our day, the more we don't let these things like social media, like phone, like messages, whatever, interfere with our day. So really take that down and, and take this, don't take this with a grain of salt. I really want you to do this. I'd say pause right now even and start writing a few things and continue later. But if you really can, just, this is, like, I don't want you to waste time, me talking here. Seems productive. If you get one thing away from this lecture, I think it really is this. Make a timetable. And just like someone asked, how do I make a consistent timetable? When my school starts and ends at different times. That's true. But we don't care about that. We, we want you to make a timetable that you'll try to abide with even if things change and maybe for your use you could the night before make a few timetables depending on your schedule monday is tuesday are different but honestly i'd stick to one and just try your best to abide by them and yet yeah, things change 
things change and there's a lot of unpredictability in our days, but we want to be more intentional. I'm going to say this a million times. We want to be more intentional with our time. It's all that we have. And don't let these companies take that away from you. <clears throat> okay. Number five, this is non-negotiable. Your phone should always be on do not disturb. Now, many of us go throughout our day. We leave our phone on, not, not on do not disturb. And it's very easy, even for me, like even coming from a person teaching you a lecture about digital minimalism, if I kept my phone on, not on do not disturb, I'm more inclined, obviously, to check it. And I honestly myself have like, I don't know, compared to people, other people, but I have a big inclination to get addicted to my phone. So I'm more aware of that and trying to come up with ways that help me to battle this. And this is where I'm coming from. This is the tips that I came up with and I've seen and, and you probably heard many times. So do not disturb is non-negotiable. I'm sure even if you have an Android, iPhone, whatever, you have something similar. But always put your phone on do not disturb. Do not let those notific notifications ring. Remember what I said initially about companies exploiting this fact that unpredictability is more enticing and unpredictability is going to release more dopamine. So all these notifications are is darn predictable. Your brain loves them. Your brain is going to love that alert coming in randomly. And so, yeah, the penguin guy said something that's true. Yeah. Keep your phone on do not disturb. Notifications are just going to affect your attention negatively. In Deep Work, Cal Newport, another book of Cal Newport, he talks about, I believe it's called the attention residue. So imagine you're working and you're doing homework. You check your notification. And believe it or not, you're going to think that you could focus right back to the task that you were working on. But that's a myth. And your brain is still going to be thinking about the previous thing that you were doing. So the previous alert that you were checking on your phone, for example. So once you really understand how notifications affect your attention and your attention is almost like currency, I think it really gives us an awareness, right? And a reason to put your phone on do not disturb. Even if you're at the gym, even if you're, you think you're doing something unproductive, we don't care about that. We care about being intentional with our time, more mindful, intention, intentional. And that's where this comes from. You decide when you're going to open your phone. The phone doesn't decide. Just like social media companies can't decide when or how long you use their platforms for. You decide when you're going to open your phone. You decide when you're going to read it, when you're going to apply. You have to be intentional with your time or else they're going to decide for you. And I personally, I feel like a day with more control of my time, more intentional is the best day. And that comes, honestly, remember I talked about waking up in the morning and not using your phone. Everything is connected. Everything is interconnected. We want to be more mindful and more intentional. So deciding not to use your phone first thing in the morning gives you that intentionality in your day. Okay. So we know do not disturb, non-negotiable. If any of you, let's give you practical tips. If any of you right now have your phone in front of you, it's not on do not disturb, put it on do not disturb. Or else you won't be able to focus on this lecture. <laughs> so you're going to be thinking about your text with your girlfriend, with your, if you have one, with your friends, with your whatever, aunt. You cannot focus on two things. Multitasking is a myth, and you can't do two things at once. 
you have to put your 100% in one task to do that. I think this one, number six, is really big. And in Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport, again, very recommended book alongside with Deep Work. Notice how most of these things are how to make your time more intentional. So number six is Cal Newport talks about this term called solitude deprivation. And what it really is, is in today's world, we don't have time for solitude. Solitude is time for you to be with your own mind away from any inputs of other minds. So what are, what are inputs? Me talking to you right now, you're not in solitude, believe it or not. You think you're alone in your room listening to a lecture. You're not. It's not a bad thing, but you have to be more intentional and get more solitude in your day. So what this solitude deprivation is, is in today's world, and I'm going to talk, share a story about myself, but in today's world, you just look outside and someone just wakes up, puts on their headphones, puts on music, goes to the gym, puts on music, goes back, listens, goes to lecture, always with inputs from other people. Whether you're listening to an audiobook, you feel productive, whether you listen to music, whether you listen to YouTube videos, you're getting inputs from other minds, right? Input from other minds is good, but we want a balance. We want a balance of having this introspective time. It's really sad that in today's world, we just don't have this time. We can't find time for ourselves. And I really believe that with more solitude in your day, you can really step away from your life and see like, where am I? Why, why am I doing this? Why am I on my phone for five hours? I really think that the reason why we're so unintentional with our time and we're wasting our time has to do with the fact that we're always, always not alone. We're always seeking the second we're bored. We're seeking some input. The second you're bored, you open YouTube. The second you're bored, you go to Instagram, you seek inputs. You're never alone. You're never alone with your minds. And all you want to do is listen to music in your car, on the way to work, on the way to this, listen to audiobooks. Yeah, it feels productive. I'm not saying not to, but I think we really need a balance here. And I'm going to really talk to you about how we can have this balance. So the first thing I'd say about solitude deprivation is whenever you go on walks, don't bring your phone. As I said before, your mind needs time to process emotions experienced throughout the day. Imagine how many things you experience. Me talking to you now, there's a lot of information at once. Your mind needs to process. Your mind cannot always have so many inputs from other minds. <clears throat> all at once, you really need time to process emotions. Whether it's negative, whether it's positive emotions, you need time to process emotions. And so start with walking without your phone and develop this habit of going on walks. Don't see it as a negative when you're not with your phone, whether you're not talking to people. Just Use that opportunity to be more mindful, walking outside, enjoying the trees, and enjoying nature. <clears throat> Again, this all goes to being more intentional. So you decide that I'm not going to walk. You're gonna, not going to walk with your phone. You have that intention in mind that you're going to be more present that way. And yeah just try to balance this if you go to the gym and you listen to music on the way to the gym on the way back don't listen to music on the way back i want you to just enjoy the present moment 
and walk. I feel like in today's world, we think it's such a negative thing. We think that it's so negative to just not do anything. Just it's something that's been done for years, right? You look at hundreds of years ago, how did people get all these inventions and ideas? They had time to think, they had time to be introspective. They had time to deep journal. And that leads me to the next thing about solitude deprivation and that's deep journaling. Journaling as well as gratitude journaling, all these habits, especially meditation as well. These are habits that, why are they so important? These are habits that let you have more introspective time to process your emotions better and so on. So this is why these habits are so amazing, right? Meditation, journaling, it gives you more of that solitude that you need. I'm not saying stay in your room the whole day and just don't do anything. Don't talk to anyone. We want to balance. But many of us, even if we think we're balanced in our day, myself included, right? We have to try our best to be more balanced and more intentional with solitude specifically. So as I said, one habit that you can develop, just recapping, go on long walks, especially longer walks than usual, 30, 40 minutes. Try best. Walking is very important, but not with your phone or else you're not it's not, you're not getting the benefits of walking. And if you're thinking during that time, maybe thinking about negative thoughts, don't think it's a bad thing. Use that time to really question yourself. Why am I thinking about this? This is your time. Introspective time is really your time to see your thoughts and see what thoughts repeats throughout the day. And then maybe after your walk, you go journal about it, go deep journal about it. So that's solitude deprivation. And I really just look around people walking, always have headphones around. People cannot get out of their house without headphones, listening to music, listening to audiobooks, listening to YouTube. You think you're productive, but your mind needs a rest. The only time your mind could process emotions is when it just by itself. So that's, the, that's number six. Number seven out of eight is, again, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to keep repeating being intentional, but this is what it's about. You want to schedule your leisure time. So in that habit tracker, or sorry, in that timetable that we talked about, just try to schedule your leisure time. So decide now, actually, like with me, maybe take a notebook out or anything, but I want you to write down, possibly in your notes app, but write down right now. I'm going to give you like 10 seconds before I start. Get a paper, get your notes out. All right, write down the time, preferably like 30 minutes to one hour when you could have some leisure time, leisure time to indulge in instant gratification. Yeah, I said before, instant gratification is bad. We don't want you on these apps. But we need some sort of balance. And coming from a place where we want to be more intentional, we want this to be scheduled. So my personal time that I just wrote down here on my notebook is 9 to 10 p.m. This is one hour. I don't use this one hour the whole time, but I leave it there for a chance to be indulging in some of the things that, you know, texts that piled up, whether it's texts, whether it's emails. This is your time to go all out. I don't want you to use this to be, you know, instant gratification monkey, but someone asked if you can have one, more than one hour. Hanging out with family is not instant gratification. It's not. It's not unproductive. It's not instant gratification. 
I think that's something that we all need more. So that's not a bad thing, and, and you want more of that. You're not unproductive if you talk to people in real life. So yeah, so I mentioned scheduling leisure time. I hope you all wrote it. Honestly, just share it right now in the chat. What's your leisure time? Whether it's from 30 minutes to one hour, write down. Okay. Nice. Keep them coming. This is amazing, right? Because how many of you had a chance before this to think and be more intentional about your leisure time? Like maybe you did, but for the majority of us, myself included, before, you know, being into this stuff, I did not know about these things. And just scheduling it in gives you that opportunity to be more intentional. So that's very good. You all have your thing. I want you guys to follow that. I want you guys to follow your leisure time to the best of your ability. Yeah, you're going to screw up but try your best. Okay. What we're going to do the last kind of thing before I'm going to bring people up to the stage. This is a pretty long lecture. Thank you all for sticking in. I hope it's been pretty helpful so far. So number eight, we're going to talk about, this is a very short one. If you have a business or if you're using TikTok, Instagram, et cetera, for your business, for content creation, including YouTube, et cetera, Discord, then leverage it. <laughs> we don't want you guys to be like, oh, this is bad. Can't use it ever. How do you think we're here? We're here because YouTube was leveraged for a good cause. So leverage technology for your benefit including Instagram, including TikTok, if you're uploading stuff, this is amazing. We want this. We just don't want you guys to be indulging in that instant gratification. We want you guys to be creating, not consuming. Right. Society almost has this agenda to numb the everyday person. They want you guys to consume all day. And then you can't, if you consume all day, you don't have time to produce. So producing is really the most important thing, producing content, producing anything. So yeah, that's the last point here because I don't want you guys to be almost scared too much of technology. If you're using these things for your benefit, then use them. But really stop and maybe journal about this today because you stuck around and this probably interests you, but maybe journal today and be like, is Instagram or insert whatever app you use, is this really this important, right? We talked about this, any benefit approach, list out all the benefits and all the negatives, Are the positives outweighing the negatives by a certain percentage point. So I want you guys to really take your time and ask yourself that. Probably journal if you have time. I'm going to leave you with a note that digital minimalists, they have a mindset that everything, every app on their phone is purposeful. We talked a lot about the concept of intentionality here today. Every app on their phone is purposeful. Everything is for a cause. We don't just have TikTok because once in a while we could indulge in instant gratification. We have TikTok because we're going to produce content to get more people to follow us or to, et cetera, whatever you use TikTok for. I know some people use it. But if you have any questions, we're going we're gonna to talk about questions soon. I'm going to bring people up to the stage. 
But if you want to learn more about the stuff that I'm teaching here, I want you guys to read Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport. Uh, I'm going to write it down. In addition to Deep Work, which many of you may have heard about, by Di but Digital Minimalism is another one of his books. He goes very deep. Yeah, Cal Newport also wrote Deep Work. But digital minimalism is honestly all that I talked to you about, but he goes even deeper. He talks about all these companies and, you know, how they don't have your intentions in mind. They don't care about you. They care about your time and that's their currency. So he really drills that down. He gives examples, like I said, with the red color that we see everywhere on YouTube, Discord. You get a notification on Discord. You see that red notification. So. Read that book if you're interested. I, I honestly think it helped me a lot. But just that that's another book that could give you value in your life, in addition to deep work. But I'd be honest, I think digital minimalism is a better read. That's my two cents. I hope this lecture gave you value. I hope you could be much more intentional with your time. And Really try your best to drill that down. How do I be more intentional in my time? So I give you a couple of tips, but in a second, I want to hear what you got for me. Maybe I missed something and so on. And then we'll go to questions. Okay. Um, one thing I want to leave you off before we invite people to the stage is that sorry i was distracted a little is that we have a i have a youtube channel that i talk about things self-improvement and if you're interested if you feel like i helped you today or give, gave you value i talk about solitude deprivation i talk about stuff like this on my youtube channel so you could click on it on my about me you'll see a youtube link uh, victory up to you, whatever you think makes sense. I don't care. I could combine them too, but okay. We're going to bring people up and only raise your hand. If you think you have something to contribute and rather than asking questions, I'd like people to come up if they want to contribute something, a tip or anything that they found helpful to get more of that intentionality in their day. Okay. So Reva, you up? How are you, man? Could you hear me? I don't know if I could hear you. Can't hear you, Reva. Do, do you guys hear him? Or is it just me? So it's just you. Okay. Yeah, try and maybe change the input. See your mic settings. All right, bro. We'll, we'll let you fix that. And we're going to get someone else for now. Okay. Hey, hello. hello. How are you, Wall? Yeah, I'm great. I really enjoyed the lecture. Wasn't yeah. expecting this much information, actually. 100%. Glad it helped. Yeah. Um, well, what do you have to any tips or anything on limiting phone usage or anything that you like to talk about? Yeah, so a little tip is put your phone away as much as possible. Like, don't have it in the same room, even when you sleep. I know some people using the Sleep Cycle app, but uh, you, you should really only use that if you're advanced, you know, like if you can really hold off using your phone. Right. Um, and, yeah, I, I experienced when I put my phone in the living room, it's downstairs. I I... I'm so much more productive. 
like I have my studio upstairs and only like the few stairs I have to go down always get me um gets me like unmotivated to go down to get my phone like uh it's a barrier an extra barrier to to cross mm -hmm. to check notifications 100% and also digital minimalism is also mm -hmm. i think about computer usage i know so many people that have like 100 tabs in their chrome and um it i think it's a great tip to have at max four or five tabs open on, mm. on the computer it's because your, your mind is always cluttered with the whole fucking chrome tab bar mm -hmm. 100 things open and you you really lose focus and uh, yeah 100 percent something that helped me that's important right so not only you're talking not only about phone usage what if we can have our computer usage more or less cl cluttered right yeah. that's what you're talking about. yeah that's awesome yeah. do you have anything else or uh, uh, thank you for the lecture man 100 <laughs> percent, man yeah, oh, and the, and, the, and the schedule thing, schedule your day, have like put some random things throughout your day that don't have to be productive, but away from the phone, like mm -hmm. do something, but don't have breaks in, in your day because those breaks will, will be time you spent on your phone. hundred percent. Okay. That's all, man. Thanks, Thank you, man. hundred percent. See you, bro. See ya. All right, Riva, we're going to talk to you. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah, you're good. How are you, man? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Good. You got it fixed. <laughs> uh, is it bad? Yeah, I'm no, no, phone. you're good. I hear you oh, okay. well, man. So I, I'm on my phone. I don't know what happened with my PC. So, Let's see what you got, man. What do you? Any tips on limiting phone so, usage or? Yeah, the best tip I can give is simply. It, like when you remove uh, time from your phone, you need to fill that space. You know, like you, 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 for example, you spend three hours on your on your phone every day. So uh, you want to reduce it to one hour a day of phone use. So you have extra two hours of free time. That, that free time has to be spent doing something, of course. Um, so. You already said the best way is uh, having a schedule, but if you don't have a schedule, I would simply, um, I would personally do uh, simple things uh, that are very productive, but are uh, in, a, in a way useful for your day. For example, instead uh, of um, spending time on my phone in the morning, I have a night and um, morning routine. Mm -hmm. and Throughout the day, I have one hour where I um, have like a routine where I take care of myself. So I, I generally take a bath or a shower. Then I generally, um, I don't know, put some cream on, uh, mm -hmm. cut my nails. It's like very basic stuff that are not like productive, like making money or having a job, but um, at least are more useful than, you know, spending your time scrolling mindlessly throughout thousands and thousands of, of reels on Instagram. 100%, so, man. Um, for example, um, the, best, the best example I have is what, um, back in ancient Rome, um, what um, people used to do is having two, two, two time in their day. One was called ot Otsum and the other was called Negotsum. So Otsum was like a free time that was spent on, uh, for example, games, often gambling, going out with your friends. So going to bar, like what, what now is called a bar. Mm -hmm. And that time was set to like replenish your, uh, um, um, your energy level so that during the negotium, you will have, you know, max energy to actually be a good productive person. So like this period of potsium has to be, um, also means basically uh Ooh, we lost him all right it happens Reva, are you there or we lost our man 
Reva, let me try try to get you in red again. Okay. Yeah, we lost him. I don't know what's <laughs> <laughs> happening today. <laughs> so, um, I was saying about the, so basically, the awesome is basically means um, a, not now it means lazy, it means, um, but it's actually like a productive time because during this lazy time, you are actually replenishing your energies. The best mm -hmm. way to, in the modern day, many people think, think that, oh yeah, I will replenish my energy by watching a movie. But as you said, that doesn't really work. You get more tired from like spending thousands of hours on your phone every, every month. So mm -hmm. the best way is to have um, a time in your day where you spend time with your friends, your family, or taking care of yourself. Um, the, the two words are otium and uh, negotium. It's Latin. It's, mm. It means um, it means lazy. It's, a, it's like lazy time and productive work hours, basically. Um, Can you write it in the yeah. chat? Can you write that in the yeah. chat? Where are you from, by the way? I'm Italian. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> nice yeah, meeting you. Thank, yeah. thank you for that. Do you have anything else or any other? Ideas? No, that's pretty, that's pretty much it. So like, make sure you have yeah. like, you know, um, often they say the 80, 20% rule in um, dopamine detox. So 80% uh, self-improvement and 20%, um, you know, um, I, I, I'm, I don't have the word, uh, relaxing basically, like free time, the do uh, instant dopamine. Yeah. Get that 20%. Out of that 20%, try to have the least amount of uh, time possible on your phone. That 20% has to be possibly 99% on doing like productive things and the one like productive but relaxing things and 1% on your phone. Yeah, that's, that, that's it. Good. Thank you for the info. Yeah. Thanks. I'll go back to the uh, yep. stage. Right. Enjoy Thank you for coming. Yep. All right, we're gonna have one more, maybe a few more. Let's see. Troy, you there? Troy, come on. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I don't know how this works. I'm kind of related to this <laughs> lecture thing. No problem. Uh, yeah, I've been listening to the people giving good advice, and I kind of thought of a, something a bit more relevant to the subject, which is controlled, uh, controlled fun, basically. So you see how in social media you have kind of random um random dopamine hits from notifications and whatnot so if you eliminate that basically and have more organized time so specifically you have this hour for gaming and that hour for relaxing it would be a bit more productive because it's a controlled amount of time and even the work is controlled so if you have uncontrolled work you just do work anytime like you do it in a week and when the deadline comes, you do it in like one day, basically. But if you control it, then basically everything gets done. Yeah, that's some good input, man. Hi. Thank you for that. Do you got anything else for the boys? Uh, no, that's about it. I, I, honestly, I've been kind of new to this uh, self-improvement thing. I've only been exercising for a few like days now. It's only been a week. Mm -hmm. But... Yeah, I've been liking this community here, honestly. But uh, I'm, I'm actually, am I allowed to ask one more question? Sure, a hundred percent. Okay, okay. It's about it's about like uh, instead of consuming, you should be producing. And I was actually thinking about uh, the work, the kind of work that, uh, let's say, it requires kind of consuming. 
So mm -hmm. I do basically what I do is I draw, I mm -hmm. depict things that are in my mind. So I have to consume uh, well a specific media, not any media. So I just go on Pinterest and I get my specific reference and something like that. So I was wondering if that kind of thing you could do in your routine or not, and oh, how you can do that. So you're saying you're saying you're using you're using like Pinterest and all these to draw, right? Yeah, like controlled consumption for the sake of production. A hundred percent. That's fine, and I think that is amazing because you're in, you're more intentional, right, with your time. You're, you're deciding, oh, I'm going to use this technology to my advantage, and instead of letting it consume me, I'm going to use it for drawing, and that's amazing. We don't want we're, we live in a world where we have so many resources that we could use, and so you yeah. don't want to not use them, right? Because for the sense of being a digital minimalist or or I can't use social media, I can't use Pinterest, I can't, whatever. We want to use them. We want to leverage our technology for our benefits. And that is really what digital minimalists are about. Yeah. We're not, we, we almost leverage that technology. And I think that's perfect what you're doing, which is awesome, man. That's so cool. Yeah. I, actually, I want to add one more thing. It was actually about the Pinterest thing. Uh, yeah. I guess if you use Twitter to like find your reference or Instagram, that would be bad because that's kind of uh, still like a source of dopamine. So I wouldn't advise that. That's why many people that, you know, they rely on Twitter for their job, et cetera. Yeah, they, that one is kind of hard. They end up outsourcing some of that work to other people. Yeah, that might actually be a good idea because uh, you uh, you tend to have the urge to just go and scroll on Twitter if you're um, <laughs> if you're just doing work on it. Why not? A hundred percent, man. Well, thanks for coming on. It was nice having you. No, no, thank you, thank you. I love this community. Awesome, man. See you. All right, I'm out of here. All right, you guys. We're gonna add one more. Michael, we got you. I invited you. Come on to speak. Uh, okay, hi, you can hear me? Hey, Michael, how are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I wanted to say something about what, um, I forgot his name, but what the other guy said, Troy Sus. Um, he said that you have to consume less and create more. But I think that um, consuming is really important for inspiration i think for example if you look at the music in industry maybe like almost every song is like sampled from somewhere for example mm -hmm. uh one of my favorite rappers mf doom um he is he made an album in 2004 that was called mad villainy and um turns out like i watched a video on youtube about um where every sample from every song came from and i didn't know and i think like like he got inspired by those instrumentals or whatever he was using and that just led to this creation he made so i think i think that um i think like that consuming is very important and you can't say that, that in my opinion, it's not like that you that consuming makes you foul. I think consuming it depends on the way on the way you are consuming. Are you getting inspired or are you just like laying in your bed and you know? A hundred percent foul about it. So I think yeah. And also like everything you produce is meant to be consumed, right? So if everybody would be like, Oh no, I'm not consuming or like I'm only consuming this much, like half of the shit that is being produced won't be consumed so i think um i kind of disagree with that and i understand the mindset but yeah i think if you are kind of a person that leads to um how it's called the word let me translate it trans um nah, i don't even know the word in my language Never mind, but like if you're kind of the person that treats consumption wrong, maybe this is like a good thing to do. But I think also that consumption can be used in so many different ways. So, yeah, that's my shit. 
Hundred percent, man. I think that to add on to that, I think that it really depends on the person. And the reason that advice is given is because the average person honestly is gonna exploit that and they're gonna consume and consume just bad stuff. And so for the people who are more aware, like you, how they could benefit from consumption. Obviously learning is so important. Yeah. If you actually consume to better yourself, then you're consuming obviously productively. And that's that yeah, I think. Or you're consuming to get inspired. Like for example, Kanye West uh, on that song Stronger, he also like um sampled the um how it's called instrumental he used like this mm -hmm. robot voice he also sampled that and he's not like the only guy that listened to that like maybe if we imagine like a million people listen to this like robot voice saying faster stronger and stuff mm -hmm. and he was the only one of this one thousand like thousands of people that um, got inspired by this so much that they made this song so yeah awesome man thank you for your input that was very valuable i'm sure to everyone else yeah Awesome, man. We'll see you. Yeah, thank you. Of course. All right, guys. We're going to wrap it up. That was the last person. Before we go, though, before you go, I want to send you, if you want to support me and what I'm doing, I'm going to send you the link. And that is the channel that I upload to, as I said before. It was nice having you guys. And hope we can talk soon again. I'd love to come up again and share some valuable input. But for the time being, go and be more intentional with your time. Thank you, Get. Thank you, Hi, and everyone. Appreciate it. Hope I was able to give you some value in your day. And go and be more intentional with your day from now on. We don't want you to let other people influence you. And you decide what you're going to do in the day, you're going to have control. So go and do that. It was awesome talking to you guys and giving you value. I'll see you guys talk soon.